Here we are at example nine from our 0.47 notes. We're asked to solve for x in this case. Um, well, unfortunately, we don't like fractions. And what we're gonna go ahead and do is try and get rid of these fractions. Really, there's only this one on the right side, but it's unfortunately one big fraction, okay? Our end game, again, is to get x all by himself. So what we can go ahead and do is multiply both sides by the LCM, so in this case, uh, we don't even have to really worry about any fractions on the left side, uh, but the whole right side is based upon this one fraction. In this case, the denominator is m. So what we'll go ahead and do is multiply both the left side and right side by that LCM, in this case m. Now when we do that, we end up on the left side with m times z, so that just gives us mz. On the right side, we end up with our m on top and m on the bottom. So those just end up canceling with one another, leaving us pretty much just with our top on the right side. So in this case, we end up with x times n plus p. Now in a previous video, I had said, you know, it's good to kind of start off by distributing. This would be one of those cases, most of the time at least you would distribute. This would be one of those cases where you wouldn't necessarily go ahead and distribute. It can be done. Um, but unfortunately, then you'd almost have to work backwards to do, um, to kind of take it back to still solve for x, okay? So again, there are times, most of the time you will distribute, but this is one case where you wouldn't distribute. Again, here's our x, that's what we're trying to get all by himself. Well, we have this n plus p in parentheses. This n plus p kind of acts as the coefficient for the x, some number, if you kind of want to think of it as, some number. And what we want to do is kind of get rid of this number that's stuck in glue to the x. So how do we get rid of that? Well, we're going to go ahead and divide both sides by that n plus p. Normally when we're trying to solve for x or solve for a variable, the last step we normally do is uh, divide that coefficient over. And that's pretty much what's going on here with this n plus p. So on the top and bottom, they end up canceling on the right side of the, well, the equation, leaving us then with n times z all over n plus p. So now we have solved for x. Now it really doesn't matter if we've swapped the two variables. So for example, if you had like z times m, or if you didn't have these parentheses because the entire bottom is seen as one set together. Uh, so these equations can actually look very, very differently and still mean the same thing. So again, another version of this same exact answer might look like z first times m on top all over. Uh, you could even flip flop the n and the p, that wouldn't matter too. Um, in this case, we'll just get rid of the parentheses though. So these two actually mean the exact same thing, okay? So just because you might end up with an equation that looks different than somebody else, that's totally fine, or at least sometimes it's totally fine as long as all of your algebra and solving for that variable has been correct. Again, though, that is example nine from our 0.4 set of notes.